from the news from you earlier. It's her twin sister. Am I getting hazard pay for this? Oh, that's so pretty. I can't wait to see it. Should I put one on your nose? I specifically also asked for a bottle of water to go with the makeup and everything. Oh, sorry, I'll get it. I can actually see it below my eyes. It, it's like when I grew my ever? first beard. My first beard actually grew up towards my eyes. Soccer mom. Soccer mom. Yeah. Is that, well, that, it says it's water, so it'll come off. Andrew, do you want any? Mm. You're going to be good. I'll be all right. This is my Friday during the day get up here right here. Yeah, this is the, what he wears before the football game on Friday night. The, uh, the Timberlands, the, uh, the jeans. I'm going to go with the white jersey because this is a family show. And you want to put that over there with my glasses. Thank you, Cynthia. No problem. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Cynthia King Wise, jack of all trades. Or would you be a jackette because you're a girl? A Jacqueline. Maybe Joe. You're a Jacqueline of all. I like Jacqueline. I think it's a pretty name. Maybe Joe. I knew one Jackie, Jackie Frederick. Went to Mount Carmel. Yeah, Real nice. This episode is sponsored by UPMC Altoona Elite Orthopedics and the UPMC Sports Medicine Concussion Program. UPMC Altoona Elite Orthopedics and the UPMC Sports Medicine Concussion Program are proud to support youth sports across our region and proud to sponsor the 2022 High School Football Preview on the Altoona Mirror YouTube channel. To learn more about their board-certified orthopedic surgeons, their specially trained concussion management experts, and the wide range of orthopedic conditions they treat, or to schedule an appointment in one of their facilities in Hollidaysburg, Ebensburg, or Bedford, visit upmcaltuna.com backward slash ortho or call 814-889-3600. That's 814-889-3600. football season on the special Halloween edition on Mirror TV on your YouTube channel. I am joined by legendary NFL Hall of Fame coach Tom Landry here. I am also joined by, from our time machine, 2006 Andy Stein. And I am again your host. I am what happened to Deion Sanders when he let himself go after all those years playing pro baseball and pro football. Again, I am Deion Sanders. Uh, we're going to get into the high school stuff real quick, but first of all, we got in the mail. First of all, uh, kudos out to Junietta Valley. Let's go. Junietta Valley sent us, which uh, 2006 Andy Stein will hang up for us. That's right. There you go. And then we also, they threw this in well, as well, and uh, this is a Junietta Valley towel, actually a towel. So this actually looks from... It could be from the 80s, from the Bill Crowell days. <laughs> Big game against Mount Union this week. Yes, yes. And then, uh, this is where I'm hoping the Handel's Messiah music is playing right now. We got, in the mail, a really nice box. We opened it up. I want to read the letter. Uh, Dear Scott, we enjoy the weekly high school football preview shows very much that you guys do. Over the course of the season, we noticed that there's a severe lack of Eltuna memorabilia on the set, which I'm pretty sure you've mentioned in quite a few episodes. I didn't write this. I mean, this was written to us. My dad, who you met along with my wife, my daughter, and myself after an away game earlier this year at Sheets outside Harrisburg, has been meaning to get some maroon and white gear your way. We've included a hat to add to the table 
wall, your head, or wherever you see fit. Have a great day, and thank you for your dedication to local high sports, you guys. Keep up the great work, the Reed family. This is Tyson Reed's, which I even mentioned on the show. My wife and I were the sheets after the Central Dolphin East, and they sat in the, the uh, room there where you can eat at sheets, and kind of we kind of talked while I was doing my stats. But again, this could have been nicer because they paid for this, and it came in a nice yeah. box. So they paid for delivery and everything. It wasn't just dropped off. Okay, so yeah. Altoona's off the hook for now. Altoona's right. off the hook for now. And it settled, it settled Neil Rudell, our boss, down because uh, yeah. I think Neil was more offended than, <laughs> than Mike, you, and me were offended. Uh, no. Anyways, uh, Tom Landry, uh, Andy Stein 2006, let's get going here. Our uh, first game, right off the bat, Altoona 5 and 4 at Cumberland Valley 6 and 3. And Cumberland Valley's coming off a loss. Uh, yeah, they yeah. Uh, they had lost to um, Carlisle two weeks ago, and that was kind of a shocking loss. We were kind of surprised by that. Now, Altoona beat Cumberland Valley in 2020, that magical year where they knocked off State College and won the district championship. Uh, other than that, they haven't had much success against Cumberland Valley since they've come back into the uh, into the mid pen. Now. Altoona's hoping that this is their first trip to Cumberland Valley because Cumberland Valley is now the host site of the state championships. So, uh, in a perfect scenario, Altoona would be playing their first of two games uh, down at Cumberland Valley. How hard would this be to pick for you if this game were at Altoona? Yeah, because Cumberland would Valley seems like human now. They don't seem right. like this. Oh my gosh, we can't beat them. Right. It, it did seem like it does seem like a winnable game if it was home. I think I did. I did pick Cumberland, Cumberland Valley, but hey, I mean, you did. I just wanted to I call did. You okay. Out I, I mean, Altoona sputtering. Hey, you, you still got one more week until playoffs. Okay. Our next uh, game. The other thing about this game I wanted to say is is that Altoona and Mifflin County are still involved in a little bit of a tight race for the number two and three seeds, and Mifflin County plays Redland, a game that they can win this week. So. You keep an eye on who's going to end up having home field advantage in that game for the semifinals to, to go and play State now, College. Now, do does Mifflin County still play at Mitchell Field, do you know, or do they have a new field at their high school? I'm not sure. Because a couple years ago when they played Hollidaysburg, and that would have been three years ago when my sons were in 10th grade, that game was played at uh, Mitchell Field, so I'm curious to, uh, where that game would be played they at. They obviously did meet already this year in Altoona 138 here at Mansion. Uh, Next game, the big game. In fact, this would have been a great TV game. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, Bedford six and three at Bishop Guilfoyle seven and two. Uh, Bedford started the year five and zero, correct? Yeah. And BG's really been on fire too. What do you see in this one? And then Bedford had three straight heartbreaking losses before a big win last week. Uh, you know, Bedford runs the ball very well. But BG has played well defensively, and they've taken advantage of when they do get a turnover. Like that against Chestnut Ridge was a big factor in that game. And, hey, BG, like we've talked about, they're 7-2, and two, and they could be undefeated. They, they almost beat Central, and they almost beat Penn Cambria. Those are both 3A schools. Uh, you know, right now, I would say that Richland and BG are the two teams playing the best in the 2A field. Uh, made with Bald Eagle area in there too, and uh, this is an interesting game because Bedford actually needs this game if they want to move up to the number three seed in District Five Two A. Either way, they're going to have a tough game next week against either Berlin or Westinghouse. Yeah, and I'm curious as far as the jockeying positions. Is a player? Do players worry about you know the game more than like, hey, I want to be the second seed or the third seed? Or yeah. have, from your memories, what was that like? Yeah, I, I definitely did worry about a playoff sitting here in this last week. Um, you know, I, I know you still have to do to deal with the uh, you still have to deal with the task at hand for sure. But uh, yeah, that's definitely in the back of your mind going into the last week of the season. And I remember, like I said last week, I mean, there's always seems to be that one that one game of the Laurel Highlands Conference that you know you say to yourself, "Wow!" every week and Hey, here we are again. Does BG have to worry about seeding? Like, if they yeah, they do. They're yeah. still up there. They're, um, too, they're, right? they're they're in the up. They're still in line to do a home a home field game right now. But everybody is so close in the two A bracket that a loss can really hurt you in it. So uh, they need to win this game to secure a home playoff game. Okay. Our next game, uh, another game that could have been a TV game. Chestnut Ridge six and three at Penn Cambria eight and one. Uh, Penn Cambria, 
trying to hold on to it. They're in 3A right. with Central and Tyrone. They are 8-1. and one. And Chestnut Ridge is no easy walk in the park. Uh, Penn Cambry's going to have their A game ready. Yeah, they will because Penn Cambry hasn't uh, really um, blown away any of the top teams that they've played. They've had close games, but they've come out on top in most of them, except for the Richland game. And this is a game that, uh, as I've looked at the math now, there's a reason why I am a writer and <laughs> I math was my least favorite subject. And unfortunately, with high school football, there's a lot of math and points that go into these playoff seedings. I think that Penn Cambria could lose this game and still not get passed by Tyrone, who received a forfeit earlier this week uh, by St. Mary's, so they're going to get 160 bonus points. But I think that enough teams that Penn Cambria played are going to get wins this week to give them enough points, even if they don't win this game, to remain the number one seed. But, like I said, math is my least favorite subject. I'm always amazed by the athletes of the week that pick math as their favorite subject. I don't know what those kids are thinking. Actually, we should have told you to get out your calculators and a notebook paper before this episode started so you could write this stuff all down. Uh, at this point, you're in week 10. Yep. How tired are these kids? How tired do you remember being in week 10? Yeah, I, well, I, the one thing is college, I think it was a little bit different story. I definitely was tired the last week of the season, the last week of the regular season, that is. But, uh, you know, I think re high school kids, they're resilient. I think they're just ready to go every week, no matter what. Um, you know, I expect both those teams to be ready and on top of their game going into week 10. And I would think, too, they're looking forward to the playoffs, but yet they can't yeah. forget it's week 10 and it's a week 10 game that matters. I mean, both Chestnut Ridge and Pike here, it's not like uh, we can just play our starters for a couple sure. quarters. They're going to have to play their starters. And Chestnut Ridge is also yeah. involved in that same battle we talked about with Bedford. They're the two teams competing for the number three and four seed. Who do teams want to play more, Westinghouse or Berlin? I talked to Bach Frank, our sports editor, about this, and we know Berlin is a very good team. Yeah. They beat Winber, who has just been playing team. waste yeah. to teams. Uh, and Westinghouse is a Pittsburgh City school. They're undefeated, but... You know, we don't really know much about no, them because yeah. they don't play teams from around here. So, personally, I'd go with the unknown and want to play Westinghouse rather than the team that has been dominating everybody around here, especially defensively. But uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, pick-your-poison type situation. And Berlin's a good program from 7th grade on up. They are yeah. just, they win at all levels. Uh, our next game, talk about winning at all levels, and I have to apologize here because... Last week, I called Northern Bedford's Gary Black, my favorite high school coach, and Homer Delatre, the Hollisburg coach, who gave us, incidentally, the shoe that you can see in front. If Andrew can, if 2006 oh, yeah. Andy can reach. That's right. He wanted to give it to us as decoration for our Halloween show. The vintage square toe shoe that belonged to Adam Wallstrom, their special teams coach, who? Mo Valley. Mo Valley. Played at Mo Valley. That was his teams. shoe that everybody's talking about. But anyways... Uh, Gary Black's one of my two favorite coaches, Gary Black, and uh, he goes, what about John Frank? And I said, my brother doesn't watch his show, so I could really say he's not. My brother. How's he going to know he doesn't watch his show? But anyways, Northern Bedford trying to finish off at 10-0, but against Cambria Heights 7-2. Uh, what do you? Who has this game, first of all? Well, I think that's John Hartsock, and I think that the Cambria Heights, the question about Cambria Heights is Ty Stockley going to play. Uh, Ty Stockley was... In the game against Penn's Manor two weeks ago, they were up 13-0. They were in complete control of the game. He gets hurt. They lose. And, hey, I give a lot of credit to Tanner Trivis uh, that helped them bounce back and beat a pretty decent West Shemokin team last week. And it was a lot harder for them to run without Stockley because when you're in that offense and the quarterback's a threat to run, that opens up so many holes for that the running back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and the problem is, is their backup quarterback, he can throw the ball a little bit more, but he's not a running threat. So it completely changes Cambria Heights' offense. The biggest question is whether Ty Stockley's going to play. If he's going to play, this could be a very competitive game. If he doesn't play, um, you know, Northern Bedford's going to be able to really concentrate on Tribus, and that might hurt Cambria Heights' versatility and their chances 
against a really good team like Northern Bedford who has that versatility. Uh, those Northern Bedford kids that are not enough. Yeah. Do you think they sit there and think about, geez, we don't want to lose our first game because they're still going to play us. Yeah. Do high school kids think about that or are they just like, you know, we just want to get to the playoffs? Yeah, I, th- I think, well, I was never 9 no personal Mo Valley, even though we did have some good teams. We did have some good games there. Um, you know, I would think that a 9 no team, I think, you know, those guys, those guys probably have sky-high confidence right now. The one thing I will say, it's probably – it's probably pretty hard to uh, prepare for the fact that, you know, you're not sure if Stockley is going to play or not. Um, I know that was always so hard to prepare for, but, hey, I, I think they have to be prepared for everything anyway. And then our last game we're going to talk about is another jockeying positions for the playoffs. 6-3 and three Portage at Winber, 8-1. and one. Uh, What are your expectations from this game? Well, Portage and Winber are actually old foes. I mean, they were both in the West Pack. They played each other a ton. Uh, and... Um, The thing is with Winber is they can run the ball, so can Portage, though. So, I mean, you got a game that's probably not going to last very long. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, I just think that Portage maybe... um, I asked Coach Coach Slanok if this was a game that maybe they might get a little bit of help going into the playoffs because they're playing such a high-quality team. But he says they're ready for the playoffs. So, I mean, if this team's ready for the playoffs, they have mixed the run in the pass a little bit more this year. Um, you know, if Portage is competitive in this game, I think they can walk away feeling really good about it. No, if Portage lose, can they still get I'm, – I'm reading the script here. If they lose, can they still get in as a home game because of who's it's, junior? It's going to be one? tough. It, it, it's like I said, in, in 1A, it's all really close. Only eight teams are making the playoffs in 1A this year. That's changed from years past where it was 12 teams. So the only the top four are hosting. They don't get a bye this year. And Portage is right there with Junia Valley, but Junia Valley also has a tough game against Mount Union, so they may not win yeah. that game. So it's it's going to be tight in 1A. Do you think high school kids, even though they don't put the scores on a scoreboard watching, but nowadays you have access to, you can yeah. have some kid walk up to the thing and go, hey, I just checked on the internet, blah, 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 Susan. Do you think high school kids, because you've covered a lot of games. Yeah. And you've been down in those sides, those press boxes. Are they aware of other scores when these games are going on? Yeah, I think you do. And you do hear from maybe somebody, uh, somebody else on the sideline. And that's and that's different from when I played. You know, when, you know, when I was playing on Friday nights, it was like you didn't find out until. Or sometimes they would give the scores over mm-hmm. the loudspeaker or the PA, R- right? But yeah. not like nowadays. Yeah, right. Exactly. So you you probably definitely do hear about it um, when they're on the side. And when you're on the sidelines, you probably have to hear about it from a photographer or something. Maybe one of us. Maybe so. Uh, I bet you the coaches don't want to know, uh, at least during the game. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's different from when I played. Except you wouldn't get a score from me in the sidelines because I have my flip phone. <laughs> yeah. And two, I'm too old to walk the sidelines. Yeah, that's right. But uh, let's get to our fun portion of the show now. Tom Landry's stat of the week. Uh, this is where we have our director Wes Craven Jr. will put in that cool stuff and everything. Uh, what is? Tom Landry, stat of the week. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to uh, River Valley and Everett. They're playing each other this week. Both teams are 0 and 9. Someone's going to win a game, and uh, you know these teams put in just as much work as everybody else. And uh, they go to practice every day. And I just uh, you know hope that that game is real competitive and um, rooting for both teams. Uh, as far as the stat of the week. Um, the game we talked about earlier, Cambria Heights versus Northern Bedford, has two of our 3,000-yard rushers both in the game, Tanner Tribus from Heights and Adam Johnson from Northern Bedford. And actually, they're also the two leading scorers in the mirror coverage area. Johnson has scored 168 points, and Tribus has scored 140 points. So could be a high-scoring one. Uh, out in Loisburg. And could that game, too, not be as fast as the portage Winber game? We actually should bet, even though we don't encourage betting, <laughs> we should bet in the office Friday night, Daniel, uh, excuse me, Mr. Craven, about which game gets done first. We open a dollar in the pot there. Uh, then we're going to go... We'll do an over-under, too. Like, what time, will, what time will the game be over? Geez, I wonder if somebody's more of a professional gambler yeah, yeah. than some of the other people here. That's right. Anyways, do you know uh, Sud Solomon? Ooh. No, I don't. I wonder I what Suds would pick. I should meet him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, 2006, Andy Stein's That's line right. is now our next uh, bit here. What is your Andy Stein's line? It's a hat! Short steps. Short steps are better than long steps. 
Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, judging from my gear here, um, this would be my Friday afternoon gear, what I wore to school before the game. Uh, if you thought that I was going to go a whole season without picking Mo Valley as my line of the week, you're nuts. That what? wasn't going to happen. Let's go Big Mo. Hey, this is my, this is my Wait, home. Andy goes to Mo Valley? Yeah, I went to, yeah, goes to Mo Valley. That's wow. right. It's 2006, man. How many minutes in before we knew that in this episode? Did we know it, that? Did we chart that? It, it's October 2006. I don't know if you guys knew that. But anyways, Mo Valley last week, um, a 63-30 to 30 win over Myers, Myersdale. That's right. That's 63 points. They ran for 358 rushing yards. Uh, Levi Canute and Tanner Kephar both went over 100 yards in that game. Good job to those guys. Uh, their offensive line is left tackle Hunter Nepp, left guard Tyler Law, center Darius Hensel, right guard Connor Williams, right tackle Skyler Williams, and tight end Sam Shepley. Hey, you never know. Maybe one of those guys will be here replacing me someday or something like maybe they, maybe we'll just hire them and they'll become a sports writer here at the mirror yeah, we'll be dead though hey, that could that's probably, already tired but hey you can always follow my footsteps you guys are younger that's right anyways that good job Hansel, Black Knights. that Hansel I, remember, yeah. I think his brother did he have a brother because that was a part of our uh, there's, and there's Hansel's all over yeah, the I always thought it was like Hansel I'm, yeah, not even, Hansel? I'm not even sure who's that Hansel like Hansel, Hansel. 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 anyways Dion Sanders cool name yeah. segment This is what we're going to do. This is our week 10 uh, cool name segment. Uh, the first one, it's a give me. I love the name when I saw it on there as I was scanning. State College, Zach Paterno. Mm -hmm. Senior, HB, DN. I don't know how much he plays, if he plays at all, but I love that name, Paterno, and I always will. And then Clearfield, I like this name because this name sounds like a kid that's probably going to be like on Wall Street someday. His name is Nolan Rockmore. Rockmore. Nolan Rockmore. The only thing would have been better if his name was Nolan Rockmore the second. What if his middle name was Ryan? Nolan, Nolan Ryan Rockmore. Yeah. I like oh, that. I didn't even think about it. Just sometimes yeah. the little hamster falls asleep. <laughs> Clearfield Jr., offensive lineman, defensive lineman. Nolan Rockmore. Uh, what are you doing? You do, he does something different every week. That? This one I have no idea. What are you doing now, Mr. Landry? Well, I'm drawing up a play for Jackie Smith. We're going to run it in the Super Bowl. There's no way it won't fail. It's, I, there's no way it's going to fail. It's going to be Certainly. perfect. I bet the guy's going to be wide open. God bless his heart for the fact is that he gets so into character when he, we do these Halloween episodes. I can't wait till next year to see what we do for Always next year. Always think about X's and O's. X's and O's, yes. But uh, that's going to do it for week 10. And I'll be curious to see what our playoff matchups are for next week, especially to give you a teaser because we don't know where Tyrone's going to end up, Central and Penn Cambry in that little uh, trifecta there for the District 6 3A. That's going to make for as much interesting reading Monday morning in the mirror. Would it be Monday morning, Tom? Yeah. Would that be? Yes. So anyway, hey, I want to be in the character too here. Yeah, we, I think I played for – no, I didn't. I played for Jimmy Johnson. The meeting The meeting is uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock at Mansion Park for the playoffs. So. I just want to know, if this is 2006 – why am I at work? I should be like preparing for school tomorrow. I'm trying to think. I was here in 2006. You were yeah. here in 2006. I was. Uh, <laughs> where old? where were you at then in 2006? I'm trying to think. I was in middle school. Okay, that shows you how old we all are. Yeah. <laughs> but for Wes Craven over there for 2006, Andy Stein, for Tom Landry, the legendary cowboy coach, I am Deion Sanders after Deion Sanders. Uh, thanks for watching Mirror TV. We'll see you again next week.